Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Prosperity Through Multifamily Real Estate Investing Podcast. I am your host, Real Estate Cody, and joining with, joining me this morning, as always, my man, Mr. Brian Alfaro. And Brian, we had a really, really good trip here uh, this past weekend to Knoxville. What do you think? No, I thought that was great. It was great connecting with uh, a lot of our fellow multifamily investors and networking and doing some asset tours. So I had a blast. I did too, man. Proximity is power. And Knoxville is a pretty cool city, man. The first time going there, pretty environment and uh, definitely plan on taking the family back one day. So, uh, but, you know, Brian, I'm starting out this show a little irritated and I'll tell you why, because I, I don't like feeling old and our guest today is making me feel old. Tell the audience who that is. All right. I, I think this might be a record for youngest person in the seat. So Cody, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but Today, we have Jack Rosenthal, who is an 18-year-old, that's one eight, 18-year-old entrepreneur and investor. He's the author of Teen Investing, which has become the number two best-selling book on teenage investing. He's also the founder of Young Investors Club, LLC, the largest teen investing club in the country with $120,000 in assets. Lastly, he maintains his own investment portfolio, and I believe he's sitting in his college dorm room right now during this interview. Jack, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, uh, Brian. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Cody. Super, uh, super excited to be here. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'm looking forward to getting the chance to talk with your audience and tell them about some of the things I've done. Well, man, we are excited to have you here. And Brian, yes, you're absolutely correct. Jack is the youngest uh, guest appearing on the show to date. And uh, man, listen, this is really inspiring. I absolutely love this. This is very motivating because it's great to see future entrepreneurs like yourself starting out at such a young age. And uh, that just shows us that the future is very, very bright uh, for the world ahead. But man, tell us a little bit more about your background and, um, you know, I guess how you found yourself to be a real estate entrepreneur at 18. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Where to begin? I mean, I could really start all the way back at six years old, but I guess I'll fast forward a little bit to start in the club. So when I was 14 years old, I had this idea to start this thing called the Young Investors Club. Um, I basically start out with one member, just me. And I basically decided I was going to put in a thousand bucks to invest. And at the time I was looking for similar other teenage investing clubs where I could connect with other young investors and all together invest our money in the stock market. But I couldn't really find anything in my local area or online or anywhere really. So I was like, Hey, why don't I create my own club and, and see what I could do here. So that first year I recruited 20 members. We grew the club to 20,000 in assets then kept growing it. Uh, by the time of junior year, I think we had 40,000 assets. And then junior year, I was like, junior, which is also the hardest year of high school to begin with. I was like, you know, I'm going to take this club. We, we've done here is cool so far. We have 40,000 assets, but I want to take this to become the largest team investing club in the country. So we went on heavy recruiting mode that year. I think within a six month span, we raised a ton of money, got a ton of new members. And by the end of that year, we've grown to over a hundred thousand dollars in assets, close to hundred members. And we became the largest that I'm aware of teen investing club in terms of assets in the country. So very proud of that. And that, that kind of leads me into the books, which you mentioned. Uh, when I was kind of my senior year of high school, my original plan was always to just run this while I was in high school. I wasn't going to continue running it while I was in college because I always wanted the high school to be running the club because it's for other high schoolers. So as my kind of parting gift to the club, I wrote this book called Teen Investing, which kind of went over a whole bunch of the principles that I had learned and taught a whole bunch of other people in the club as far as what we do and what our strategies and tactics are for when it comes to investing, um, as well as just like past war stories of different investments we've made, good ones and bad ones. So I wrote this book as kind of like a leave a leaving gift or a parting gift to every member of the club. We sent them out to everybody. And then I was like, hey, wait a minute, this principles in here would be relevant for any young investor. So I made it available on Amazon. And uh, since then, the book has done really well. I'm really excited. I was surprised at how well the book did. And, uh, and yeah, that's kind of how the journey went from me starting the club to writing a book. Cody, I don't know about you, but I wasn't doing any of that when I was 18. I was about to ask you the same thing. Like, what the heck were you doing at 14 years old? I was worried about like who my next girlfriend was going to be or going to football practice. Definitely wasn't thinking about being an entrepreneur. What were you doing? Uh, I was probably in college, uh, hanging out with friends, playing video games, playing basketball, just living the 18-year-old life. So what's scary to think about is what Jack's going to be doing when he's our age. 
<laughs> I know. I kind of feel like we've been slacking for the past two decades right. of our lifespan. Thank, thanks, Jack. Appreciate that. I'm just going to stop the show right now. <laughs> no, man. Hey, kudos, man. That is uh, absolutely ex uh, exceptional, man. Really, really awesome that you've been able to build this really community of just like-minded young entrepreneurs. Just out of curiosity, did you have any trouble finding other entrepreneurs around the age of 14? I mean, I can't imagine that there's a bunch of 14 year olds thinking about. Not, not to that. mention you have a thousand bucks to invest also really narrows the pool a lot there. You got a lot that are in, believe me, there's more than you would think that'd be interested in investing. Everyone likes the idea of getting rich. You ask a single kid, Hey, you want to get rich? More than half of them. will. that's like the first thing on any teenage boy that I know is mine is like, oh, yeah, I want to play football. But then when I'm older, I want to be rich. I mean, that's like everybody. So getting rich is not you know, want to be rich is not the not the rare thing. The rare thing is having a thousand bucks that they can actually throw into this club. So that was that was the hardest part recruiting. And I'll tell you a story about that. So when it came to recruiting the way that we did it, because I don't I don't have 100 friends that could put in a thousand dollars. That was going to be impossible. We had to go outside of my own sphere. We had to go. Uh, look for other organizations. The way we did it is we partnered with a larger organization that I knew had a lot of parents in it. So we partnered with them and we got on their email list and we said, hey, can we blast out emails to your list promoting our club? We think it'd be really beneficial to both of us. It'd be really beneficial for your kid members or for your parents that have kids. It's kind of like a plus to being in this organization and it'd be beneficial to us because we get some members. Um, and that's really how we grew and got a lot of members. And basically all the members came from that partnership we made. Genius, number one, very, very smart. Where in the world did you figure that out? Like, okay, most most, <laughs> most of us and as an adult probably can't put those pieces together and, and think like that. I mean, you know, the, the entrepreneur mindset isn't something that you just uh, pick up overnight, right? So 14 years old, you're starting this club, you grew it over the several years, you, you know, where did you kind of find that inspiration uh, and thought process behind that? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I, it's a little hard to remember, believe it or not. It's already long enough ago where it's hard to remember. I'm 18 now, it's 14, 18 and a half, so really almost five years ago. Um, so I believe what happened is I start, was wanted to start the club. I saw that there was a need for it in the market, so to speak. And I was like, before I start this, I want to make sure I can get members. I'm not going to just start this with just my own money. Like, that's pointless. I want to make sure I can get like a core group of members. And I remember what my idea was, is like, let me see if I could find the organization first, see if I can convince them to be a part of it first. And then I'm going to decide to launch this whole idea of starting the club, because without that foundational kind of base, I would have never been able to start it. So I wanted to start, um, kind of wanted to get, get some members first and then start the reverse. Again, very, very smart. Like it. So let's go back to where did the first thousand dollars come from? My thousand? Yeah. Great question. I know that's like, you know, everyone always wants to know like the super successful people, like where's your first million dollars come from? But like for a kid, a thousand dollars is a big milestone. So where did that come from? Um, okay. When I was younger, I created a, created my first business when I was six selling paper airplanes online. We sold 70, uh, I started a website called coolpaperplanes.com. It's got 50,000 visitors ever since we launched the website because it's a great domain name that we purchased when I was six years old. So I was like 12 years ago when the internet was like newer, much newer than it is today, where you can get a domain name like Cool Paper Planes. So we purchased that website. Um, I had a passion for making paper airplanes when I was six years old. And I decided I wanted to sell them online. So we ended up selling 70 orders and made $71 each to $70 for paper airplanes. That was when I was six. Then when I was eight, oh yeah. So this is, then I made some more money when I was eight and 10. My dad lent me $1,000 at a 1% interest rate, which is, he still viewed it the same thing as having found the money in the bank. He's like, well, the bank's paying 1%. Now it pays even less, but back then it paid 1%. And he's like, well, I'll just give the money to you, Jack. You got to pay me a 1% interest rate and you can go relend it out. So I went on this website called Prosper, where you can make peer-to-peer -peer loans to other people. Generally, you lend the money out at 8 to 10%. So I borrowed the money from my dad at 1%, relent it out at 8 to 10% and kept that 7% roughly spread. Then we did the same thing with $5,000. So now I had like a business making like $370 a year in the spread difference between the two when I was 10 years old, basically approving these peer-to-peer -peer loans on the platform. And then I also ran a vending machine business too. And I ran that business for three years. That was a great business for any teenager 
running a vending machine teaches you so much. And it's such a great business. I made $50 a week, every week restocking a vending machine. And I did that for every weekend, every Sunday for three years. Jack, your father wins father of the year for like the past decade. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, right. When I think about some of the strategies he did, like it was genius looking. I didn't realize how I was just the, I was being used at the time. I didn't realize it, but looking back, like he was so smart to set up all these things. <laughs> Well, and, and that's a, such a good point because you're absolutely right. I mean, listen, you know, it's it's so incredible to hear that that was ingrained from in you from such a young age, and you had that thought, you know, that that mindset growing up. From I mean, like you said, the time of six years old, and again, what what six year olds thinking about a business like nobody? But what's what's really inspiring about that is again, you're 18 years old now. You have this mindset that you grew up with. That's all you know. I mean, I feel like I'm talking to the future Jeff Bezos, which if you get to that status, don't forget about me and Brian, okay? Just make sure you take a song, okay? Of course not. Uh, <laughs> you guys up there with me. <laughs> but it's just really cool because, listen, I mean, you have such a long, long runway ahead of you, and you're already so much further along uh, than, than most of us that start in our, you know, young to mid-adulthood. So uh, kudos to that, man. This, this is really exciting. Uh, and man, I am really questioning my upbringing now, Brian, I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. So let's go back, Jack. Let's talk about, so you, you started the club and, and then you started taking, um, you know, a thousand dollar investments and you mentioned assets. So you had 20,000 assets. It grew to 120,000 assets. What exactly were the assets that you guys were, um, uh, were acquiring or, or building? Yep. So all stock market related. I know you guys aren't going to be happy to hear that because it's a real estate show, but all stock market related. And the reason why it was a lot simpler to do that than investing in any other asset class, investing in the stock market, much more simple. You can set up a brokerage account. We can do it under our sponsor organization, set up the account under their name. Um, it's a lot simpler. You can do it in a lot easier increments. So if we want to put 5% of the portfolio into some stock, we can make it exactly 5%. Trying to do a real estate investment be a lot harder to fit in the jigsaw puzzle pieces into that. Not to mention that we typically have to deal with debt. It would have been a lot more complicated to invest in any other asset class other than stocks. And we also got pretty solid returns in stocks. I think we made an average of 10% a year uh, investing in the stock market, which was pretty solid. I think like somewhat in line with market returns at the time. Yeah, I don't think the average investor... Uh who's investing in stocks gets 10%. So kudos to you for doing your homework. And sounds like you're probably picking the right stocks if you were getting 10%. Yeah, no, we definitely, we did some, we did some solid picks. Um, the way that it worked is the whole group would kind of vote collectively on each investment decision we made and the kind of group wisdom would, uh, would decide where we wanted to invest. Um, let's see. Oh, going back to the book for one second. So yeah, the, that all kind of spun out to the teen investing book which is, which, as I said, was kind of like a whole bunch of the principles that I learned from investing in the stock market at a young age, from things that I taught a whole bunch of the other teenagers that, ran, that were in the club with me, um, as well as just like a little bit of my own stories in the teen investing book as well. That's on Amazon, by the way, for anyone who wants to get it. Teen Investing by Jack Rosenthal. This guy's a pro, Brian. This guy uh, I know. He's doing. a straight up hustler. I feel like I'm getting <laughs> hustled over here. <laughs> You like well, that? I mean, you know what's funny is if you don't repeat it, like I've realized you repeat it more times, you get more sales. Like you almost have to repeat it so much that like you get bored of it. But the listener, for example, like I've been on some other podcasts, I've mentioned the book like 10 times already. For me, it's like, why haven't you just bought it already? But then I have to remember for all these people, they're hearing me for the first time. So got to redo the pitch all over again. Smart, smart, smart man. Hey, and we'll make sure that's in the show notes for you too. Don't worry, man. We'll make sure to put that out there for you. Perfect. But uh... yeah, got it. Very cool. And you, and remind me, you mentioned that there's now over how many members in the group? We have close to hundred members. I don't have the exact member count in front of me, but somewhere close to hundred and over 120 in assets. Man. So there's a hundred young entrepreneurs, just like you with the same mindset out there that that's paving a, a, just a bright, bright future for themselves, man. Yeah. 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 yeah no, it's, it's really cool. And, um, and I don't run the club anymore, but it's run by another young entrepreneur, young investor. And that's cool. Like the legacy kind of thing that I built where that club will just keep going on and on year after year, even long after I'm done with it. Yeah. You know, we, we need that. Listen, I mean, we, we talk about this all the time, right? Is where the system, our system is designed to keep the disparity between 
the the uh, the wealthy and the and the not so wealthy, right? I mean, and it's going to continue to go that way. And our school systems don't teach these principles, right? And the beautiful thing about it is, is that we have access to the information, but we need people like you out there putting it together and making it readily available to help open that up to other people. So I absolutely love this, man. I really do hope that uh, other other people listening to the show that have children. Uh, I don't know if we have any 18 year old listeners. Hopefully we will after this, but uh, I know I've got a 16 year old son and you best believe he's going to sit here and listen to this recording for sure. Um, because these are some principles that we talk about now, but you, you got to send me your address afterwards. I'll send him a copy of the book. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. Appreciate that. So, well, listen, so you mentioned you, you now have the, the teen investor club that is, you know, under somebody else's leadership, you know, you're in college right now studying, I believe you mentioned finance and entrepreneurship. Kind of tell us about where, what's lying ahead for you and your future endeavors. Yeah. Um, so probably most of um, the next four years, I'll be in college. This is my freshman year of college. Uh, probably a, like a early on career on Wall Street, like right out of college, I'll probably go on Wall Street, learn some tricks of the trade there, you know, learn, uh, not exactly thinking like the Wolf of Wall Street movie. Like every, they say it's funny. I'm, I'm in bunch. Of, I'm in college with a bunch of finance kids, and every single one of them looks at that movie. They're like, "That, that's what I want." <laughs> no, so I don't think it's exactly going to be like that. But, um, but yeah, probably a career on Wall Street in, in my right out of college years. Awesome. I would highly recommend you consider real estate as well. The ability for you that, you know, so far you've been able to raise some capital for some investors. Uh, you know, you've been able to kind of keep the spread between what you borrowed and what you loaned out. Uh, there's definitely lots of real estate investing opportunities like that, whether you're uh, in multifamily or you're a hard money lender, um, just planting some nuggets in your seat, uh, planting some nuggets in your head. Yeah, no, those are definitely interesting ideas to consider for the future. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, I had a question for you. Shoot. Hate it when that happens. I lost it. Oh man. Well, let, let's let's shift a little bit, Jack. Let's let's talk a little bit. So, you know, we we talk to other people on our show that have gone through this past year. Obviously, COVID has devastated everybody. You know, it's impacted all of us, and particularly as entrepreneurs. How has COVID impacted you and and where you're at in, in your uh, young life? So I'm trying to think, okay, from an investment portfolio perspective. Um, okay, definitely lost some money. Because we sold, we had, I had my personal, I mean, I care about my personal stock positions, which is, which has grown to, uh, to an account. Now. And yeah, so in March or something like that, we sold, we bought back in, like, I think the following month, but we probably lost out like maybe 10% of upside by selling too quickly for my personal stock portfolio. So that's probably how it hurt me. I mean, we ended up making the money back and then more, but we would have made even more money. If, uh, if we had just waited on road through the whole run, we probably, as I said, give up something like a 10%, um, 10%. So yeah, that's probably how COVID's negatively affected me. Interesting. All right. And, you know, this is going to be for Brian and John, our third partner, who's not here. Um, he's also goes by crypto, John. Um, any, any interest or uh, dabbling in the cryptocurrency space? As, as soon as he said his name was crypto, John, I'm like, oh, it's got to be a cryptocurrency question. <laughs> um, yep. Totally. So I recently got involved in that. I like Ethereum. I think Ethereum is a great crypto investment. I put uh, a little while ago, like a, a little less than a month ago, I put 5,000 into Ethereum and it's turned into 7,000. So uh, 20% plus return in uh, a little over like three weeks. So yeah, I've been happy with that so far. That's awesome. We were too bad. We don't have John here. John will give you a nice little uh, lecture on how to uh, best set your portfolio for your crypto investment. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was like a small little kind of like, you know what it is? I more did it as like a hedge because I'm like, or I don't know what the exact proper term would be, but basically like, I'm like, I'm going to be so angry every single day. This thing keeps going up and I don't have an investment in it. It was more just, yeah. it was more just hey, to make you feel more calm. I know John will tell you, don't get FOMO. The fear of missing out, right? Just make yeah. smart investment choices, which you've already sound like you're already doing. Do your homework on on uh, you know market analysis and technical analysis on these uh, on these stocks and these uh, these coins and these tokens, and 
make smart decisions and, uh, you know, make sure you're not playing with any money you can't afford to lose. That's always the advice I like to give anybody who's making an investment decision. Right. And then, uh, you know, it's a little bit of luck. Yeah, totally. I mean, I don't pretend to know anything about cryptocurrency. I'm a total <laughs> novice when it comes to, I don't know anything about coins or, or whatever. I have no idea how Ethereum even works. I know about stocks, so I don't know about cryptocurrency, but yeah, as I said, it was just, it's all going up every single day. I had some discretionary money. I wanted to invest in it. It was just sitting in the bank account outside of that. So I'm like, ah, let me put in this thing. Not going to touch it for 20 years. And hopefully since I have a longer time horizon, since I'm on the younger side in 20 years from now, it'll be worth more. So that's, that's my perspective on Ethereum. Interesting, man. Well, listen, you, you're a very, very bright young man. I'm sure if that's the path you want to go down, I'm sure you have no trouble picking that one up pretty quick. It sounds like uh, you got a good head on your shoulders there, but um, let's, let's kind of pivot. Let's go back to, I want to spend some time in sharing your message and, and helping to educate, you know, other young entrepreneurs, you know, in the teenage years, what would be a couple pieces of advice that you would give to, you know, a young 14 year old version of yourself um, who's getting, you know, I guess what 14, you're just now getting into high school, right? So, you know, what would you instruct people to do as they're entering into young teenage years? Sure. Uh, I was asked this question earlier and the guy really liked the answer I gave. So I'll give you guys the same answer. So when you're 14 or when you're a teenager, you're starting off and investing, really an investor. I assume your questions work here towards like being an investor more than an entrepreneur, or is it for both? I'm sorry, say it again. What is your question more for like a teenager who wants to get involved in investing or like a teenager who wants to start a business or either one? Well, you know, what's interesting is I, I really don't know the context behind the question. I only say that because like I think about myself at 14 and I wasn't thinking about a job or, or yeah. investing, you know, so let, let's uh, take my son, for example, let's say he's 16 years old and he hears he hears these things from from what's his the, name. Can you give his name? So his can... name is Brandon. Right. So Bra okay. Brandon hears. Brandon hears dad talk about all things commercial real estate and, and why you should, you know, uh, invest your, your money. But uh, if you sat down with my son right now and um, had some Dr. Pepper, let's say, I would imagine you're not having some scotch and brandy or whatever. But uh, uh, what, what, what advice would you give to him? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, sorry, what's his name again? <laughs> Brandon. Brandon. Okay. Perfect. Brandon, here's what you got to do. Number, this is the same piece of advice I give to any teenager. First thing you need to concentrate on doing is banking your first five grand. Most important thing before you make any investments, get 5,000 to invest first. The reason because $100 investment is not going to get anyone excited, not even a teenager with a lot of money. If they have a $100 investment, let's say you make a return on that of 8%, $8. I mean, that's not getting anyone excited. So you need to have your first $5,000 that the return on your investment is actually going to get you excited and really energetic. How do you get the $5,000? And I just get complaints all the time. Oh, it's so hard to make money. No, it's not. You can go work a summer job, work 10 to $15 an hour. You work enough hours per week. And after one summer, you can have that much. Not to mention if you're 16 years old right now, by the time you're 18, two summers, you could have that much easily and then more. Not to mention that's just the summer. What about during the year? You could work on the weekends. All plenty of 10 to $15 an hour minimum wage jobs that would be happy to have some teenager come help them out for a few hours a week. And that'll add up very quickly to uh, $5,000. Not to mention, you can start a business in addition to that. You know, there's tons of ways online you could find to make a few hundred bucks of extra per month or a few hundred bucks extra per year. There's tons of online schemes. There's like I mean, an Amazon seller, Etsy seller. Um, there's like Instagram. There's different things you can go with growing an Instagram page. Tons of different online businesses I've seen teenagers start. So getting the $5,000, I mean, you can research a whole bunch of ways. But the very first important thing you need to do is get your first 5,000. As soon as you're done with that, then you can go two different paths. You can say, I want to be an active investor and be really on top of my portfolio and watching it every day or every month. Or I'm going to be a passive investor and just kind of leave it all in and not touch it. So let's say you want to be the active investor. Find like five, let's say you're investing in stocks, find like five different stocks you like, you think are going to be long-term investing, good long-term investments that could be around in 20 years. Put your 5,000 into those stocks. Keep, keep trading them out of them every once a month or every two months. That's not really the strategy I go by, but a lot of active investors really like that because they can have their hands on the money. Or number two, just invest it passively in the S&P 500. You'll make eight to 10% per year and that'll keep growing basically for the rest of your life. Not to mention, so that's like step two, where to invest it. And then step three, 
keep adding that to every single year. It's going to just keep compounding. The more money you throw in there as you get older, you'll pr uh, presumably earn more and more money. And then that five grand pot will just keep growing and growing and growing so by the time you're dead. <laughs> so that the, by the time you're your dad's age, you got a whole bunch of money just sitting in that account. There you go. There's, there's the plan. I love awesome. it. Yeah, that's a great, great blueprint. Brian, did you have a question for me? No, what I was going to make a comment that I think one of the hardest things to explain to a younger person, especially when you, you know, you think about yourself as a young kid and you get your first dollar, you get your first $5, you get your first $20, right? Your initial reaction is to spend it, right? It's got to take a tremendous amount of self-control at, at that age. You know, let's say you get to that $100, you get to that $1,000 or you get to that $5,000, it takes a tremendous amount of self-control to get to that point. So I'm curious, you know, if, if there's anything you have done or, or any practices you have sort of uh, as self-discipline in order to, you know, not be the person who, you know, if I'm your dad and I hand you a hundred dollars, you spend all hundred and then come ask for another hundred. I don't know if that's what your son does, Cody, but, <laughs> but uh, I've seen plenty of kids that do that. Uh, so, you know, what have you done from a self-discipline standpoint to, to sort of shift your mindset uh, from more of a consumer mindset to an investment mindset? Yeah, that's a great question. You got to, I mean, you got to just think about it as an investment. Don't look at it as, um, but here's the way that I look at it. I say, hey, dad, you just gave me a hundred bucks. That's great. This is younger Jack talking. Jack doesn't get free money now. But um, so, hey, dad, you just gave me a hundred bucks. So what is that? That's $5 a year forever. It's not a hundred dollars. It's $5 a year in income that I can make forever. Then what I want to do with the $5, that's up to me. But I didn't just get a hundred dollars. I got $5 a year. So that, that's the way that I look at it. Yeah, I love that. Love that. And uh, I'm kind of fortunate, Brian. So my son, it's, it's interesting because he doesn't have to come to free money. He just like walks up and he's like, yeah, I got this $400 and I'm going to go. And I'm like, what, where'd you get $400? Dude, you don't even have a job yet. And he's just like, so he, he's, he's doing something behind my back. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, <laughs> uh, well, Jack, let's go back. So you laid out the framework. So, you know, we're going to make the first 5,000. Uh, we're going to start a, a business online through different platforms. And we're going to decide if we're going to be an active passive investor. And, and then, like you said, we're going to keep adding to the portfolio every year. But when you're starting out at such a young age, I think you mentioned this earlier, is you have to have a sponsor, right, to, to kind of sign in on some of these, uh, these brokerage accounts, right? So how do we find a sponsor? Who do we get to uh, help us set that up? Sorry, some noise outside. Um, yeah, so the way you find a sponsor is, I mean, I went to my grandparent. Uh, he sponsored, he was my open my helped me open my first investment account when I was eight years old. He gave me like a little bit of money, typical of many grandparents, like, oh, here's some money, set up your first stock portfolio as a kid. And that's how mine got set up through Fidelity custodial account. That's the that's the way that he set it up. But yeah, typically finding a parent or a grandparent is the best place to start. If you don't have access to that, I mean, most parents, if if they're they're reasonable would be willing to set up a custodial account for their kids which just require signing some paperwork um, but if you don't have access to something like that then go to you know a fa another family member like an uncle something like that maybe a family member who's a little bit successful he has his own stock portfolio or she has her own stock portfolio and uh, she'd be willing to help you get started so it doesn't have to be a parental guardian or anything like that it could just be a, an adult of age that um, can help set that up yeah exactly it's good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Cause I would, I'd argue that probably there's, there's many of us adults that probably don't have that financial literacy. So hear, hearing their 14, 16 or 18 year old son walk up and say, Hey, help sponsor me a, a, a an investment account. They're probably like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. I just looked it up just to clarify for the audience. So you can have a custodial account as a financial account held in, in the name of a minor, usually by a parent, legal guardian, or another relative. Excellent. Interesting. Good to know. Good to know. Awesome. Um, man, this is, this is just cool, man. I'm just inspired. I'm, I'm kind of awestruck right now because it's like, <laughs> you know, I mean, this, you don't find much, many people like you, Jack. And I just, again, I want to commend you on that. It's really exciting. I really want to meet your parents, man. So, tell me a little bit more about your upbringing. So it, it sounds like you came from an entre entrepreneurship background. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your, your parents, and your grandparents. Yeah. So, okay. My 
dad was a successful finance entrepreneur. That's where the kind of finance thing comes from. That's how I think he was able to brilliantly set up that model when I was younger. We're like, okay, I'm going to give you a thousand dollars, 1%, percent you know, lend it out. So what I've later found out is a part of his business does the same thing on a larger scale. So like he was almost teaching me his business through doing it uh, when I was a lot younger, which is really cool. So my dad was an entrepreneur. Now, really interesting thing to point out there. My, I have a younger brother. He couldn't care less about entrepreneurship, investing, or anything like that. All he wants to do is go play football. Both raised in the same household, they had the same food, by the same dad. But yet one of us was just really interested in this at a young age, and the other one of us couldn't care less. I'm not saying anyone's better or worse, but those were just the two different mentalities. So I think that although, yeah, it's true my dad was an entrepreneur, it was really some kind of early initiative in me. Like, I mean, six-year-olds generally don't want to create paper airplane businesses, even if they're like given an opportunity to, they, they do it out of, because they just want to, like, it's just some kind of a neat thing. in them. just like how some kids want to go throw a ball early on. I kind of wanted to do that early on. And like I said, me and my brother, both raised in the same family, but one of us, one, one of us just always had a passion for it. And the other one didn't. So that's my dad, my grandpa, he's got a whole different backstory, not so much related to entrepreneurship, but he just always had a stock account. And he was kind of, the, he wanted, he said like to my dad, like, Hey, I want to help Jack out with this. So my dad allowed him. And uh, yeah, that's how, that's how my grandpa got me started in investing. And I actually dedicated my first book to my grandfather for uh, helping me and get started, helping me and getting started with investing. Very cool, man. Very inspiring story. And you know what I love about that? And, and, and Brian, what do you think? When we, when we talk about real estate and, and commercial real estate, you know, for us, we talk about generational wealth, right? Passing on a legacy that can last for generations to come to our children, right? And it's interesting because I think in, in speaking to generational wealth, in listening to you speak, that also, I think that encompasses knowledge as well, right? It encompasses financial literacy. You know, your grandfather helped you sponsor your or get your first account set up. Your dad had that financial entrepreneurship background and helped you understand the world of, of investing and, and help you grow your portfolio. And, um, and now again, you're 18 years old, about to take off, you know, as a, as a young man and an adult. And, um, and I would imagine that you're going to continue those principles and teach your children at such a young age. And, and you're right. It's, it's funny to listen to you. You mentioned about you and your brother, because um, I, I'm a father of three and all children, they're all distinctively different, right? <laughs> and so everybody has their own personality. But for those who that like, you find this entrepreneurship bug and, and it draws it to them, um, it's just really cool that you can pass that knowledge down to them and just keep it going at such a young age. And again, it's just very, very inspiring. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I definitely do hope to, if I have children one day, teach them the same thing, which hopefully I will. Uh, teach them the same, teach them the same principles that I was taught at a young age. And I predict, by the way, if I do, that most of them probably won't be interested in investing in entrepreneurship. And I think that's fine. But I think just as long as any kid kind of knows the foundations, that's all they need to know, which is like, like I said before, you know, I mean, it's very simple, but you'd be surprised. I mean, I'm sure you actually wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure you know people like this, people that don't understand basic principles, like spending more than you make going into personal debt you know having putting so much stuff on the credit card and then all of a sudden the credit card bill comes 30 days later and you can't pay you got to pay high interest rates i mean there's some basic things that uh that i think i would want to just teach any young teenager at an early age to make sure that they have those same principles for the rest of their life well let's kind of talk about that then like where where can young entrepreneurs like yourself go to find communities like the one that you've kind of built in, in your teen investing club. I mean, obviously everything's digital now. I mean, you know, I know our young, our young people, they have access to that same uh, digital footprint. So what other resources that you know of that you can uh, steer people to? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, the book, I mean, that's all the obvious one, go to teen investing book by Jack Rosenthal. Um, but other resources, I would say YouTube, YouTube is a great resource. I mean, there's a ton of high quality, high production content that comes from YouTube that, I mean, I'm in college and I would say it's oftentimes better than what you can find on college because you can really niche down for exactly what you're looking for and get someone who is an expert in that exact subject. Um, so YouTube is a great resource if you know how to use it uh, properly in order to learn about you know money and investing and entrepreneurship as a kid. Uh, what else? There's some other great books out there which teach you about investing. I mean, I know some of those books, like there's the, uh, what's the, 
what's the, the number one bestseller book? I think it's by Benjamin Graham, the intelligent investor. I think that's like the most common number one, most Great common book. sold investor yeah. book. So I'd recommend that for any young investor. Um, other resources, there's usually investment clubs in their school. Now, the one thing you want to stay away from those is, or just know about those is they typically invest fake money, like fake hundred thousand dollars. Everyone gets at the beginning of the year. And what I've seen happen like nine times out of 10 is everyone always wants to try and compete to see who has the most money at the end of the year. But because of that, they're willing to take on as much risk as possible because the money doesn't mean anything to them. It's all fake. So every one year, like one kid will throw it into a penny stock and then the penny stock will quadruple or 50 times. And all of a sudden that kid has the most money at the end of the year, but really took on an enormous amount of risk. So he didn't really learn anything about investing. So just one thing you want to be careful of when you're investing in these like fake investing clubs doesn't really give you the same perspective as when you're investing in real money. But other than that, yeah, those books, YouTube videos, those are all great resources for uh, young investors looking to get started. Well, appreciate you sharing that. And I think that's uh, definitely something we'll have to make sure to help spread. And, and so young entrepreneurs can and know where to find this because, um, you know, we, for us, you know, we have our thought leadership platforms, right? We have our podcasts, we have our meetups and, you know, we have our virtual networking and all these different forms that we go to, but it's really, really cool to hear that there are other platforms out there for young entrepreneurs like yourself that, you know, instead of going ha hang out at the, I don't know, where do kids hang out even more? <laughs> now I'm dating myself, but, um, you know, now that, you know, they can actually interact with people like yourself at investing communities, you know, whether it be virtual or live at school, um, and, and learn about uh, financial literacy, man. That's a uh, really, really cool. So, um, well, Jack, man, we're getting near the end of our time. And, and before we go, Brian, do you have anything else uh, for Jack? I mean, this has been this has been fun, man. No, no. I mean, you've already said everything, Cody. I, I would just echo what you've said, and uh, really impressive what you've done so far, Jack. I, I would encourage you to you know keep uh, keep educating yourself, not only in the uh, uh, the formal sense, you go into college, but continue to do what you're doing, man. Get out there, hustle, grind, network, uh, learn from others that are a few steps ahead of you, and then you know take some people along the way with you. So you know you clearly have a, a good head on your shoulders, and I think you can add a lot of value to your your peers and your community. So uh, just keep keep doing what you're doing. We look forward to hopefully, Cody. What do you think? Having him back on the show, maybe in a year or so, and just to see what he's done and and to continue to watch his progress and grow. And Brian, this, this dude here is going to be like, he's going to forget about the little man in a year. Now he's going to be like, look, I, I'm done. Like made fortune 500. I'm, I don't have time for you guys, but to your point, we'd love to have you back. If uh, <laughs> Jack, I mean, no, no, I agree. I'd love to, I'd love to come back as well. I'm, uh, I'll give you guys a one year update. See what I've done in the next year. There we go. Yeah, man. would absolutely love that. It would be really cool to follow your timeline. And, and again, just really inspired by by this, the intelligence that you have at such a young age, you know, and, and um, you know, I really do hope that this resonates with some of our young listeners and some of our parents that listen to the show that may have a, a, a son or daughter your age that, um, you know, they're hoping to instill some of these same principles too. So definitely look forward to sharing that message. But uh, so before we go, Jack, got four more questions for you, man, and then we're going to wrap up here. So, uh, you know, what do you like to do for your own continued education uh, to further your investing? Let's see. Um, well, I mean, whenever I got a new stock, first person I call is my grandfather. You know, we hatched it out together and we debated. He's got the more traditional investing style of basically traditional kind of companies he likes the most. I'm more in the newer kind of crypto world ideas. And um, so we kind of debate back and forth. And then if we decide, you know, like, okay, let's put an X amount of dollars into this thing, see if it makes sense. So that's that he's probably he's he's still a great resource and uh, really lucky to have him in my life um so that's my first resource online resources i go to as i said like youtube videos i think those are all really really helpful especially when i want to get involved or educated about new topics i don't know about like obviously you learn about cryptocurrency from a youtube video i saw and some other youtube videos that kind of came up after that so youtube youtube is a great resource can't recommend it enough if you know exactly what you're looking for can I pick on you a little bit and say that I'm so glad you didn't mention TikTok? If you'd have mentioned TikTok, I'd have been like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and that comes from my son, by the way, Brandon. So, uh, but uh, anyway, so what, Jack, what have been some lasting lessons that you learned uh, throughout your journey over the past couple of years? Lasting lessons. Um, one of them would probably be stick with your gut. So I'll share, I'll share a loss here. I don't want to end off on a loss. So maybe we'll have to do like some kind of positive thing that happens next for the next question 
but I had, I had like some shares of a company called Shopify at a hundred dollars a share. I had some shares and this is, I took my grandfather's advice. It went down to $96 a share, like a few days later, a week later, something like that. My grandfather was like, oh, let's just sell. This thing's going nowhere. I'm like, ah, fine. So I hesitantly agreed to sell. And then two years later, this, the shares are worth a thousand dollars a share. So I was not happy with that. Um, so anyway, but if I'd stuck to my gut uh, and way, waited out in the long run, I would have made a lot more. So, so yeah, definitely stick to your gut. Love that. that. That's that's a big one for sure, for sure. Well, Jack, I know we kind of talked about this uh, a little earlier in the show, but what would be you know a piece of advice you'd give to the listeners to help them grow their businesses? Yeah, um, I'd say definitely, uh, definitely develop some kind of like internet presence. I mean, obviously, like it depends on the particular business, but developing an internet presence overall is just going to become more and more relevant in the world. Um, so yeah, definitely develop some kind of internet presence, whether it be on social media, uh, whether it be a YouTube, whether it be on Amazon, if you're selling some kind of item, whatever the case would be, is develop an internet uh, aspect to your business. Yep, I agree with that. We know that all too well, right, Brian? I think uh, you know if you, right. if you if you don't have a digital presence in today's time, you're you're just selling yourself short. You're really non-existent if you don't. So, but uh, great advice, man. Really appreciate that. Tell the listeners how they can learn more about you, Jack. Where they can download your book and uh, get connected with you. Yeah, sure. So I guess my Instagram will start there. Instagram starsocial.pro, uh, S T A R S O C I A L dot pro. I'm a good investor, not a good speller. <laughs> um, so starsocial.pro is my Instagram. Let's see, book, you can find the book on Amazon, Teen Investing or Teen Entrepreneurship, which is my newest book, this book over here, uh, which you can just search on Amazon, type my name in, Jack Rosenthal. And anywhere else you can connect with me. If you guys want, you can shoot me an email and say, hi, jackrose1824 at gmail.com. That's the email I give at the end of my book uh, for anyone who buys my book. But yeah, you guys can also message me on there as well. JackRose1824 at gmail.com. There you go. It's everything. Well, Jack, man, keep crushing it, man. Just keep keep inspiring young entrepreneurs to, to follow your path. And, and we look forward to continue to see your success, man. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. Yeah, thanks for being on the show, Jack. Thanks for having me.